Good evening, everyone. Thank you for being here. Call this meeting to order, and if you will stand, Councilman Green will have our invocation and lead us in our pledge. Let us pray. Precious Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that you bestow. All blessings that we sometimes take for granted. I ask that you will impart a part of your wisdom on this council. What we decide and vote on will please you and will be. I ask that you take care of our troops, especially those overseas. God bless our first responders who keep us safe every day. First item on our agenda tonight is a proclamation recognizing child abuse prevention month and since Councilman Green has been involved in that. I have asked him to please uh, do the presentation. Buddy, whenever you're ready. I'd like to ask my fellow exchange sites to please come forward. Whereas the City of Pocotion applauds the Exchange Club of Pocotion for its dedicated work in the prevention of child abuse in our community. And whereas the City of Pocotion commends the Exchange Club of Pocotion for its promotion of ongoing programs in our community which are designed to help prevent child abuse. And whereas the City of Pocotion stands firmly on the side of prevention of any type of abuse and believes no child should endure verbal, emotional, or physical abuse for any reason. And whereas the National Exchange Club adopted the prevention of child abuse as its national project in 1979 in response to a request by its national president who, as a physician, noticed an increase in child abuse in his medical practice. Since then, April has been designated as Child Abuse Prevention Month, and the city of Pocosin supports and encourages all of our residents and community leaders to wear blue each Monday in April in observance of Child Abuse Prevention Month. Now, therefore, he, Gordon, Helsel, <laughs> Gordon C. Helsel, Jr., Mayor of the City of Pocosin, Virginia, do hereby proclaim the month of April to be Child Abuse Prevention Month in the City of Pocosin in recognition of our commitment to health, healthy, happy children and to help eliminate child abuse in our community and support the efforts of the Exchange Club of Pocotion and all others who observe this important cause in their mission to bring awareness of this tragic problem to the forefront and to help make our community a stronger and more loving city where children will be, will be able to grow and thrive without fear of harm. Now I'd like to introduce our president, Steve Geiger, with a few words. Thank you, buddy. Mayor Hansel. City Council, the City Manager Wheeler. On behalf of the Pocosin Exchange Club, I'd like to extend our sincerest condolences for the recent passing of our Assistant City Manager, Graham Wilson. Also, thank you for acknowledging and promoting our Exchange Club's focus for the month of April, Child Abuse Prevention. We all understand the great value of our children in ensuring a bright future for Pocosin and for our country. And we also understand that this last year has been particularly difficult and challenging for them. I want to recognize our wonderful leadership in the Exchange Club for the uh, chairperson, Pat Green. Thank you. And her committee that is present tonight my wife, Gay, right down there, Sis Ambrose, and Tom Stevens. There he is. Some of our activities for this month of April include 
providing uh, a planting blue pinwheels by the two welcome signs of the city. Bags containing literature to be handed out at the mobile food bank, which is going to be tomorrow. And also bags to be handed out at a make and take session at the public library with parents and children. Also, we're going to do uh, each day a tip for the parents on our Facebook website. Pat, do you have anything that you'd like to add? I have done this for three years. Um, the Exchange Club typically does uh, projects strictly for the city of Pocosin. We are not a national club, but this is a national project for the Exchange Club as well as for the nation. It's becoming more popular as the years go on, and I think you will be seeing a lot more of the pinwheel gardens uh, be springing up in, in April. We are so happy to be able to do two this year, and um, we have a wonderful group. This is not the total committee, but this is uh, a, a group from the Exchange Club that is totally dedicated to this project. And thank you so much for the proclamation. It really means a lot. And I hope that the citizens of Pocosin will be aware of what we're trying to do. Thank you so much. Well, to each of you who uh, are here tonight, let me just say on behalf of council that we are tremendously honored to have folks like you representing such a cause. Um, and Pat, thank you for your remarks. Thank you for your remarks. And, uh, hopefully we, um, I don't know if we have that on our channel or what this month is, but if we don't, we will soon. So uh, thank you very much for being here. I appreciate what you do. All right, is there any audience for visitors? Is there anyone in the audience who would like to address council on any issue? Okay, seeing none, we'll move on to the approval of our minutes, please. May I move that we approve the minutes of our regular session of March the 8th, 2021. All right. Second. Motion made and second that we adopt the minutes from our regular session March 8th, 2021. Ms. Kim? Councilman Canella? Aye. Councilwoman Andrews? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Councilman Huck? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote <clears throat> 7 to 0. Right, thanks, Kim. Item F on our agenda is a new business, the first item, an ordinance to transfer funds to capital project fund from debt service fund for fiscal year 2021. Ms. Tanya? Good evening. Thank you. Yes, you do have an ordinance in front of you tonight transferring 160000 from debt service fund to capital project. This is made possible by the debt refinancing that we did in July. We've used a little bit of the savings because we had an interest rate, lower interest rate, and then, of course, cash flow available. So we did a first movement of the cash to actually increase our stability reserve to $1 million. And so we have an additional 160 available to go towards the sidewalk project, which is phase two. And this also, this ordinance will allow the city manager to purchase or acquire land or easements necessary to make the phase two happen. Okay, any questions of time? All right, well done. Okay, so before council. May I move that we adopt an ordinance to transfer funds to the capital project fund from debt service of the city of Pocosian, Virginia? Fiscal year 2021. Okay, thank you, bud. Second. Okay, we have a motion made and second we adopt the ordinance. Any concerns, comments? If not, Ms. Kim, please. Vice Mayor Freeman. Aye. Uh, Councilwoman Andrews. Uh, Councilman Southall. Aye. Uh, Councilman Canella. Aye. Uh, Councilman Hux. Aye. Uh, Councilman Green. Aye. Uh, Mayor Hessel. Aye. Uh, Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote seven to zero. Okay, thank you, Kim. Item two is an ordinance to authorize the city manager 
to enter into a contract, Coastal Avenue sidewalk and crosswalk construction project. Tanya? Thank you. So this is actually phase one of the sidewalk project. Um, and what we have tonight is we did put it out for bid. We had one sole bid, bidder, and they all total they bid $228,176.60. VDOT, the regional VDOT team, as well as our engineering team, are reviewing all the information to see if everything is correct. Once we see, see that correctness, we need your authorization for the city manager to enter into contract. Currently, he can only enter into contract up to 100000 If you recall with phase one, the, con the sidewalk is going to come over Shipwreck Island, have a crosswalk, turn west, go down Pocosin Avenue, and end at Cedar. Tanya, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. Any questions for Tanya? Okay. Is there a motion? Mr. Mayor, I move that we adopt an ordinance authorizing the city manager to enter into contract Ocean Avenue sidewalk and crosswalk construction project. Okay. okay. Motion made second that we adopt that ordinance. Any concerns, comments? If not, Ms. Kim, please. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Canella? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Councilwoman Andrews? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 to 0. Tanya, thank you very much. Well done. All right, item 3 is a resolution making performance to the Economic Development Authority. May I move that we adopt a resolution making appointments to the Economic Development Authority with the following names inserted Kathleen Fay and Raymond Yanel. Yanello, excuse me, Raymond. Uh, both of their terms will expire March 31st, 2025. Okay. Second. All right. Motion made and seconded. We adopt the resolution with those names inserted. Any concerns, comments, questions? If not, Ms. Kim? Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Mr. Freeman? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Councilman Canella? Aye. Mayor Hessel? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote of 7 to 0. Thank you, Kim. Appreciate that. Mr. City Manager, any comments? Uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, two items this evening. The first, um, I'm very sad to, to share with Council and the community that uh, this past weekend, uh, a me another member of our city government family, uh, Margaret Connell, who worked in the Treasurer's Office, uh, passed away. And uh, she uh, be sorely missed. The, uh, the second item uh, pertains to the uh, vaccination update. There's lots of, uh, of people to thank, and you always run the risk of, of inadvertently forgetting someone, but I'm going to try to do it anyway, with apologies. Uh, in no particular order, uh, the, the four people on our staff that have been most central to our ongoing uh, support of the vaccination clinics, which for us are in partnership with the city of Hampton, are uh, Mike Bryant, Dave Callis, Gretchen Gokenauer, and Robert Holloway. This, uh, this has really become their main job. And, um, and I'm pleased to say that uh, the vaccination there continue Last week, for example, over 500 of our citizens were extended an invitation uh, to, to be vaccinated. Uh, that will continue. Um, what we're being told now is that by the middle of April, if not before, our area will be ready to move out of 1B uh, and into 1C. And that uh, sometime in May, they, they believe that it will be open for general vaccination for all people that are eligible. Uh, it's really important that uh, folks that are interested in, in getting a vaccine through the Virginia Department of Health process, make sure they are registered. The slide that is on the screen, which is also showing on TV, has information about it. It has the phone number, it has the website. You can also find that uh, right at the top of uh, the city's website as well and, and post it on the city's social media. Even if uh, you're a person that, that thinks they're not 1B eligible at the moment. It's still important to get registered.
because the, the pace is picking up. The amount of vaccine that's coming into our region is three times what it was just a few weeks ago, and we expect that to increase. So it's very important to be registered, and you don't have to be a 1A or 1B person to register. All people are encouraged to register so that when it's time for the health department to be sending out those appointments that they've got your information. The information is pretty self-explanatory and the new state system is actually pretty easy to use. But if, if, if people need help with that, call the city manager's office and, and we will help you get uh, registered with the state. And uh, that's all I have. Sir. Okay, thank you, Randy. Mr. Bud? Uh, I would like to uh, thank the Exchange Club for their call abuse prevention and for their kind words of uh, condolence from Graham Wilson. Also, I'd like to offer a personal words of the Donald Fine family and uh, persons of Pocosa at home who are paying attention to our meeting. Thank you, Bud. John. I concur with everything Bud said. Mr. Canella. Just to kind of piggyback, just ask this whole community. You know, say a little prayer for every citizen in it. Um, we've in such a small city, we've been affected by some extraordinary losses lately. Um, keep in mind and in, in your prayers to folks here at City Hall, because uh, they're going through a lot the last couple of weeks too, and uh, they'll show up every day and serve the city uh, in an extraordinary manner. They don't miss a beat or anything so mr manager thank you and uh, your staff for what you continue that's all mr mayor thank, thank you mr. thomas david thank you. mr mayor i have no comment tonight okay buddy uh, mr mayor just to remind everybody that tomorrow is the mobile food bank uh M mobile food pantry day at the old city hall from 10 to 1. Uh, our host is the precocian exchange club and this will be another drive-through. Uh, I don't think that's going to end anytime soon. So uh, everybody that's uh, eligible, please come out. That uh, getting a good supply of food, and uh, we look forward to seeing everybody there. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, buddy. Mr. Vice Mayor, I have nothing tonight, Mr. Mayor. Okay, we're looking forward to having you back. I plan to be there. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jerry. Uh, just a couple of comments from me, but uh, just to, to echo Thank you, Randy. Uh, the comments of members of council regarding uh, Margaret and her passing. Um, she was probably, when you come in this, this door, the very first person that you see that smile on her face. Uh, and it, it is tragic and it, it is um, uh, a load to bear for the other city employees, or certainly for us. Uh, when you get to know people in this community and you work closely with them, it is, it is tragic, and we certainly had our share of it in the last three or four weeks. Um, Randy, if we could do uh, a letter on behalf of council to those individuals that you mentioned, um, that, that, that vaccination, uh, uh, or the, the vaccine, the shots, um, for those of you that have been there, that is a well-oiled machine. And thanks to uh, you know, a lot of volunteers from this city, um, and, and I, I think I could go as far, Randy, and you can correct me as saying that we're pretty well, have done just a super job um, when it goes to having our folks vaccinated. We could always do better, but we are, we are doing relatively well, yes sir. Yeah, so those, those folks, you know, my hat's off to them, and I think a letter from council would uh, would be appropriate. I did have a conversation uh, a few minutes before I came in here, a few minutes with Connor Phillips. Uh, apparently, he's up and walking today, which is a a, a uh, just you know a tremendous load lifted off of that family. Uh, we certainly wish Connor the, the very best and hope that he's uh, up and well and, and fully recovered very very soon. Uh, one item. Um, to, to back up what Buddy just had to say about the food bank, I had an opportunity, I can't say it was work, but I did have an opportunity to be out there a few weeks ago, and city manager and I together, 
And you talk about a well-oiled machine, that is. And I could not believe that in the city of Pocosin that we have that many folks that just want a meal. It is astounding. And when you, when you take a box of food and you open the car door and you sit it in the front seat and there is someone that you know and have known all of your life. And we're giving them a box of food to eat. That's, that is tragic. So, buddy, that, that, that food bank to all of those folks that work in, I know there's a multitude of volunteers. My hat is really off to those folks and to you and to Pat. Um, what a great service that is to this community. It, it is. Uh, that, that anybody would like to volunteer, you'd be happy to have them. And I would encourage anybody in the city, uh, if you want a, an experience and you want to go home feeling really good about what you've done, take some time and volunteer out there for the food bank. It's a, it's a great organization doing it, and uh, they make a, a tremendous impact on the folks that live here. Okay, anything else from anybody? Any questions, any comments? Okay, we we'll take a motion to adjourn. We'll move it, man. Okay. Second. Motion is made. Second, we adjourn. Ms. Kim. Councilwoman Andrews. <coughs> Councilman Canella? Aye. Councilman Southall? Aye. Vice Mayor Freeman? Aye. Councilman Hux? Aye. Councilman Green? Aye. Mayor Hesse? Aye. Mr. Mayor, the motion carried by a vote is 7 to 0. Okay, we are adjourned. Thank you.